Now, a lot of Zelda fans are happy with what Nintendo's been doing with Zelda, and a lot of fans are not so happy because of the Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom genre now that's kind of taking over what Zelda used to be and kind of evolving Zelda into something new, but this is something that's been going on for years now, so it's nothing new. But why are people mad now? Well, Echoes of Wisdom just dropped a brand new trailer, and where it was just kind of looking like a new take on the top-down 2D genre, thanks to the new trailer, it looks like a lot of people are upset because it seems like Nintendo has been pulling extremely from Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, because there is a lot of DNA from both of those games in this top-down 2D Zelda game with Echoes of Wisdom. Of course, you still have your comments of people complaining that it looks like a Lego game and that it looks more childish than Wind Waker. I don't know why having a cute art style is considered so bad. Why in the world does a top-down 2D Zelda game need to be hyper-realistic? I, I genuinely don't understand. It's comments like this one that a lot of people are talking about. Yes, where Jack actually states, I'm even less sold on this game now than I was before. I was hoping that sinking feeling of this just being 2D Breath of the Wild was just through the lack of information we had. But nope, the classic Zelda formula is dead. Now you might be a little confused by what they're talking about here, and I've seen a lot of comments actually bring this up again, being a top-down Breath of the Wild. Why are people saying this? Well, with this game, it's a lot different than most top-down 2D Zeldas. Zelda is able to jump and pretty much go anywhere. There's even scenes of her climbing up on trees, jumping off of ledges, it's pretty much an open world top down 2D Zelda unlike ever before. And throughout the trailer, there's actually tons of things that looks like it was pulled straight from Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, including an area called the Farren Wetlands, which literally pulls straight from the Farren region. It even looks just like the Farren region from Breath of the Wild. Gerudo region looks very similar to that of Breath of the Wilds, which of course in every game it's probably going to look somewhat similar, but this one is very, very close. The town looks very similar, and there's even like a little oasis area outside of the town that looks very very much like the one in Breath of the Wild. Even the people look the same. The UI and the quest log actually looks very similar to Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdoms as well, where you can even open up a quest log that looks like it's exactly stripped from that game. Horses are in this game, and it's not just one specific horse, it looks like there's multiple random horses that you can find all over the world. I know Breath of the Wild didn't invent horses, but come on, you get what I'm saying here. Yes, it looks like they pulled that idea straight from Breath of the Wild, where you can even place down a carrot and a random horse will come by, which you can mount and ride over the land, which I think is a super cool addition, but I see why people are comparing this to Breath of the Wild. You can't necessarily cook food in this game, but you can mix items from an inventory and make smoothies. So this is yet again another idea brought over to the 2D Zelda formula. There's different items that you can attach that gives you different status effects, very much like the clothing from Breath of the Wild, and there's even clothing options for Zelda in this game. And if that wasn't enough to convince you, there's a whole move called Bind, which literally looks exactly like Ultra Hand. The same color, the same stream of light. Yep, you can just pick up things and move them, once again, like Ultra Hand. But yeah, as you can see, some people are very upset by this. They wanted a new game that kind of strayed away from the Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom world, and I can both see this, and I also disagree. It's a little bit of both, and let me explain to you what I think. So, first off, let me take the side of why I kind of agree with this. I get that people are kind of upset with Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. It's a new take on Zelda when their whole life they've been playing a traditional, linear, you know, story-driven Zelda game. I get it, and a lot of people want that experience back, not necessarily hating on Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom, but just want a Zelda game now that focuses more on that classic formula, and, you know, top-down 2D Zelda is something that's always done that. It's something that's always got that right, you know, there's no real way to mess it up, and I think people are getting a little afraid that they might, you know, rely too much on that open-world aspect and not focus on what makes Zelda Zelda. I don't think there's anything wrong with Echoes of Wisdom taking some aspects of Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, like the UI, or even the log, where you can track your side quests and main quests, I think that's a great addition. I think that's something that definitely helps when it comes to exploration and gives us more to do in the overworld, because a lot of top-down 2D Zelda games don't really have a lot to do. You know, most of the time you're just going from dungeon to dungeon and doing the quest to get to the dungeon, so to actually have side quests and a side quest log to keep track of them the same way Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom did, I think is a great addition. And all the things that they've added seem to be small things that's just going to make a top-down 2D Zelda game even better. Oh wow, Zelda can change her clothes? That's so crazy. Why in the world does that have to be a Breath of the Wild thing? Like, that's something that should be a thing for now on. I thought that was a pretty cool idea. Or Zelda being able to put on some type of brooch or ring that gives her some type of element status. But yeah, I don't think any of that really ruins a top-down 2D Zelda game. Even with her getting a horse, I think is just a positive thing for the world. It allows us to traverse the world 
world better and easier instead of having to use the Pegasus boots and just run in a single cardinal direction, which was horrible back then. So yes, I'm very glad that something like this is an option. I also think adding the ability to go anywhere really is great for a top-down 2D Zelda game. These games always feel restrictive in nature that are already kind of open worlds. I mean, when you think about it, all the classic Zelda games are open worlds in a, just a top-down 2D space, and it should allow us to explore those areas better by jumping down cliffs or climbing up certain areas instead of having to walk all the way around or use a specific item to get up somewhere, so I really don't have a complaint by this. Now, I can kind of also agree with the people that are a little upset by this for the map design because it does feel like the map is just straight up Breath of the Wild's map, but in 2D. Because we've already seen this map in Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, and even Age of Calamity, so people are sick of these same locations. People are sick of these same areas, and people always say in comments I see, where else is Link and Zelda gonna be? This is Hyrule. These are the locations. I get that, but there were some locations that were made specifically for Breath of the Wild, like Lureland Village, and we see one that looks very, very similar in Echoes of Wisdom. I mean, I would be shocked if this isn't Lureland Village. Also, the fact that you don't need the same world all the time. We had Termina in Clock Town from Majora's Mask. We had the Great Sea in Wind Waker, which was above the world of Hyrule. Of course, Link's Awakening had a brand new island that was all set in a dream, but even Skyward Sword with the Skylands and Skyloft and even the world below was a lot different in that game. So it's still kind of unsure if this game is going to pull a lot from Breath of the Wild and its world locations, but I can kind of understand that part for some people that just want to see an entirely new world. And I'm sure we're going to be getting that with the next Zelda game, I really hope, because yes, I do agree with that. I am sick and tired of the world of Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, Age of Calamity, like I just want to move on to a new area, a new world entirely, maybe even a new kingdom that Link and Zelda visit or something. It's still really cool to see all these races and locations that we're familiar with from 3D Zelda games all in one top-down 2D Zelda game. It's really, really awesome. And even races that we haven't seen since like Majora's Mask with the Deku Scrubs, which is an also really cool addition. So yeah, two different Zora races as well. I love the NPCs, I love the towns, and it's something that I think this game is going to do really well. But one thing that I am going to straight up agree with is definitely the bind ability. This is just straight Tears of the Kingdom. And I get it, you know, it's a cool way to move things, but I mean, there's some scenes that are genuinely Tears of the Kingdom. Like pulling a half-buried chest out of the ground or picking up enemies and moving them. It just kind of feels weird. I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. It's just a move to pick things up seems, you know, in some ways OP. I feel like there's going to be a very overpowered way to just pick up enemies and objects and stuff. I mean, what's stopping you from always just picking up an enemy and throwing them off a cliff? You know what I mean? I know this game is kind of taking a backseat to combat and coming up with more creative ways to take out enemies, but I mean, like, I feel like with a couple of echoes, you're just never going to need to fight anything. You're just going to be able to pass along them by using an echo of your own or just picking them up and moving them out of the way. Even with all of these additions, this is still a top-down 2D Zelda game, and I feel like the only possible way that this can make people mad and where people could get upset is if there's no dungeons. Now that would be a pretty big issue, and I would be very shocked if there were no dungeons. This is not an open world game. This game is not big enough to be a game with no dungeons, and I feel like Nintendo's just hiding that still like they've done in the past, but I get why people are scared, because every time Nintendo does seem to hide something like this, they're not coming back the way we thought. Remember Tears of the Kingdom? We were waiting for dungeons for so long and for them to show us what's new with the world just for us to have a very barren underworld with the deaths and to have some very mediocre dungeons in that game. So yeah, I, hopefully there is some dungeons in this game that there's this hiding. There's a lot of rooms that actually look exactly like dungeons. So we're just gonna have to wait and see, but it's definitely something to not worry about yet. But I wanna know how you feel. Are you on team I'm tired of Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom and you don't like what it's doing to this game or do you like the additions that it's added and the inspiration from both Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Definitely let me know. I'm curious to see how many of you guys agree or disagree with this, but thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe before you head out, and like always, I'll see you all on the next one. See you guys.